So guys, in this particular class, we're going to see how we can load JSON data into a list view. Now let's run the project that we're going to create so that you can see what we're talking about. You can see we are downloading data, right? It's telling us as it downloads the data in the background thread, okay? So it downloads the data, meanwhile showing us this particular message. Then of course, automatically populates our list view with our data right here. Now, this is what we're going to build right here okay see of course how we can load data using the http flow and then bind it right into a c sharp uh windows form list view so you can see we have three columns id name and email now these actually do correspond to the json data that you are having right here so you can see this is the json data is public data it's available online so you can see we have the ID, we have the name, the username and the email. Okay. So there's of course the properties that you are going to download. Now when the download is complete, we show right here in this text box that our download is complete. This is what we're going to build. So let's get started. So first and foremost, we're going to start by creating a console application. No, we're creating a console application because we actually want to write this particular app from scratch okay instead of using the windows form designer that will then allow us to learn better so come choose c sharp then choose the console application then click ok okay so once we've created our console application then of course first and foremost is to add the windows form references to it so come choose the right click the references then come right here and search the windows form so come go search right here then check this system dot windows dot forms now apart from that one we also need to search the drawing so come right here and search the system dot drawing and check it and click ok these are going to add for us at least those two references the system dot drawing and system dot windows dot forms now you can see we have this empty project right here okay so our first step is to come and add our using directives then among them you are actually seeing we have the flal http in fact before proceeding just come right click here and then go to manage references then go under and in the nuget.org go and search of course the um http flal okay so do a search for flal you can just go there and search flal in your new gate and then check both of these on flal as well as the http flal okay clearly you can see that you're being told that flal is a portable a front portable url builder now it allows to make it's actually a front portable url builder okay now that is of course our flal then you also have the flal.http which is a fluent portable testable http client library so those of course are um, the http flal of course is a derivative of this particular flal so we add them and then once we've added them then of course we can then come right here and import the flal.http first and foremost we're going to then create our JSON namespace classes in c sharp are normally contained in namespaces so we can start create our first class which is the user so this is going to represent a single user in our json data now what will this user have well this is going to have an id property a name property and an email property okay then we come right here create the class called program in this class we're going to have of course a synchronization context as a static member of the class then we we'll also have a list view also static and then a label okay then we'll create this method which will be responsible for setting up our list view and then yeah creating their columns so we come private static void setup list view first we're going to instantiate a list view then we'll supply the location of that particular list view will supply its size its view okay then the full row select we're going to set it to true and then also supply the alignment of the list view then we'll come and then add the columns to our list view 
ID, name and email, these are our column headers. Then of course we're going to register our event handler. So by the way we'll be listening to the item selection changed event and then this will be our event handler now. For this event handler, just have it this way, but we're going to create it in a short while, okay? Once you are through with this method. So to register your event handler normally, you use this one plus equal to, okay? Then you supply the name of the event handler right there. Now let's go ahead and instantiate our progress label. So we'll come right here and then first specify the location of the progress label, its client size, its for color, its text property. Then we come right here and then register our event, actually create our event handler. Okay. So this will then allow us to listen to the item selection change events. So we come right here. You can see the event handler has to take in an object which is our sender of that particular event and then it also has to take in the list view selection change event tags so we pass those two objects as parameters then of course we're going to obtain the current item so list view list view item equal to e dot item okay then of course we're going to obtain the name so we come string name list view item dot sub items okay we pass in the second item the second column index and then of course get its text property then we're then going to check if it's actually selected if that particular list view item is selected so if that's the case then we're going to show that particular name in our message box now that's what we're going to do then of course we're going to create this particular asynchronous method which will be able to download our JSON data asynchronously. So first and foremost, you have to decorate this particular method with the async. So previous static async void download JSON a data. Now we're going to use await and async technique to do our asynchronous programming, whereby we'll be downloading our JSON data asynchronously. Okay, that basically means that we're going to do it in the background thread so our user interface is meanwhile going to remain responsive so we come right here we'll do it in a try catch block now first of course to do it in the background thread come right here say await then task dot run then of course async okay then of course we come right here now we'll come of course this right is a lambda expression okay so inside in the body of this our lambda expression we can see right here we're going to have this particular list of users which we call users then you come and say await then this of course is our url you guys know of course the url we've seen of course our json data from online then we invoke the get json async so get json async is a method that is defined in our flal dot http now as it's generic type we're going to pass it of course a list of users okay this then means that is going to download our data and then using the newton soft json uh is going to map those particular list of course into our list of users right here okay so at the end of the day this will give us um our list of users then of course we then need to populate our list view using that particular uh, data so we come right here we're going to loop through the data for user user in users then to post we actually need to post of course updates to the background thread we need to use a synchronization context okay so remember we're doing all this in the background thread so we need a way in which we can communicate from our background thread to the ui thread because the user interface in c sharp are not rendered in the background thread that they are being rendered in the main thread so that's where the synchronization context comes in so synchronization context the post then of course we're going to have passing a lambda expression right here so we come value then inside here we're going to come for m user and then we take this particular value now take note that of course we're passing in a user right here okay we have this user then for m user then we cast the value right here to a user object then of course we set our progress label 
to complete then of course we add our items to our list view so m list view dot items dot add we supply in an instance of the list view item meanwhile we pass in of course the id the name as well as the email and that's it that's how we'll be populating our list view from the background thread so we show a message box with our exception in case we have any then we have this method which will create for us a form so private static create form so first and foremost in this particular method we're going to obtain the current synchronization context then of course we'll then instantiate our form and then using the object initializer syntax we're going to set the text property the client size the back color or the background color and then we'll add of course our progress label into our controls then of course we'll also add our list view into our controls so we do that one using the add method then we enable the visual styles of our application then of course run it programmatically using the run method passing in that particular form that we have to run this is our main method is of course the entry point to our c -sharp application it will get executed first in it we are going to first set up our list view then we'll download our json data then we'll create our form so that's what we're going to do right here so that's it guys that's all we need to do that's everything so we just come and click start and then we just make sure that our internet is on now if the internet is not on the way mine wasn't is going to give us an error okay now it will give us an error right here so you make sure that the internet connectivity is on and then we just come click start now if we click start you can see downloading json data very fast and then it populates it and then it shows us that the download is complete okay this guy is what we've looked at so like this particular video share it and also make sure you guys subscribe to our channel program users tv if you haven't we're doing tutorials these days almost on a daily basis so you don't want to miss them out also check our website camposha.info otherwise take care i'll catch you in the next class